Welcome to this workshop offered by Dizal in partnership with Pearson. Uh, my name is Fernando, Fernando Moraes, and I'm very happy to, to be here with you this afternoon. This is a, an afternoon full of Fernandos because my dear colleague Fernanda Lages will be joining you right after my uh, presentation. So we're here uh, on this special week to wish you, um, well, we hope it has been a wonderful Teacher's Day for you. And we're preparing a little something uh, for you as a present in remembrance of this important date. And also, uh, today we're talking about teaching from the real world, using authentic videos in class. And the first thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about this topic was, okay, we're going to talk about videos, and teachers will be thinking, oh, same old, same old, same topic again, nothing new, same old of videos. How long have we been talking about teaching with videos, right? That's what I was afraid. Not you, right. And... We try to put up something that, because even though we're all ELT professionals, we've been in the field for different times. Some have been here longer, others have just arrived, right? Uh, and it might be worth revisiting some ideas and combining them with something new to see if we can uh, learn something, perhaps. And that's what we're going to try and do this afternoon. So to start, I'd like to show you, to guide you through our agenda. Uh, and we're going to start by talking about the role of videos in real world, which is 21st century world and education. Um, try to give you some reasons for using videos, as well as six points to consider when choosing a topic, when choosing a, a video. Ideas for using and to show you some video samples and teaching tips. But to start with, we're going to start with a quiz. So quiz time, okay? And in order to answer this quiz, uh, we're going to have some... I'd like to have you move in the room, but it might not be the best idea because of the space constraints we have, but we, we might try standing up, perhaps. So I'm going to show you some sentences and um, some statements, actually. And if you agree with them, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Or perhaps if it's uncomfortable for you standing up, you can raise your arm. If that rings a bell, if that sounds familiar, if you feel like that, okay. you, can you raise your hand or stand up? Okay, so it might not be so easy for Ligia because she's all with the crisscross applesauce <laughs> legs, right? But anyway, statement number one. I feel uncomfortable using authentic videos because I often feel they're too difficult for my students. Partially agree? Half. Somebody? Oh, because you choose them. Okay. Anyone who agrees with that? Totally agrees? Partially agree? Yeah. Agree in part? I have a lot of work to choose the right one from the beginning. Uh-huh. So, uh, during this workshop, we'll try to give you some tips and offer you some resources to help you teach beginners. Thank you. Thank you. You were wonderful. You did just right. Number two, I'd, I would love to use more authentic videos, but I guess they're too difficult to find. Does anyone think that? No, nobody. Well, yesterday at the webinar, everybody was, yeah, 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 I agree, agree, agree. They're difficult to find. Where can we find them? Authentic videos, come on. Okay, statement number three. I guess watching films in class is a waste of time. And teachers usually do it only because they do not have anything better to do. 
Yes, someone who believes that, someone who agrees with that. Oh, if you're at university, right? So uh, there's someone who agrees there. And look at this one now. I guess watching a full movie would be the ideal activity for a spare time like Semana do Saco Cheio. Didn't it just kill? It's time. You show a whole movie, right? No? Nobody agrees with that? Right. The last but not least. I know But you would, would, do you know teachers who would do that? I, I know. In schools? <laughs> um, it's a good idea to let students watch some videos of their chosen film or series at the end of every class. Some minutes. Some minutes. Yeah, agree. Perhaps someone who agrees. Perhaps it might be a good idea. It may not. All right. So thank you very much for participating. You're wonderful. Uh, these are some of the ideas we're going to discuss during this conversation uh, we're going to have. So, I'd like to start by talking about videos in real world, in 21st century, 2017. Uh, two giants that have changed the world. Do you have any guesses as to what giants I'm talking about? Giant companies. Ah, YouTube. YouTube and Google. Netflix, Google. Anyone else who gives? Apple. Might, have, might be Apple. I don't know. YouTube, Netflix, videos. And you know what? The first answer was right. Yeah? Netflix and YouTube, they have changed the world in a way. And they are shaping the future as well. Oops, sorry about that. And they are shaping the future. And why are they shaping future? Uh, and listen, I'm not talking about they're shaping the future of the video industry. In a way, they're kind of shaping us too. And that's uh, all this gentleman here who was from the marketing, in, and some of you might have known him. What's his name? McLuhan, Marshall McLuhan. From, and that's what he said in the 1960s for the first time, right? Um, he said, and he talked about uh, television back then, and his quote was, the medium is the message. And there are lots of Lots of other things he says, but uh, it's about this idea. So, so many people have this idea that the medium is not important. For example, um, television or uh, the internet is neither good or bad. Television is neither good or bad. What can be good or bad is what you do with it. Lots of people think this way. What uh, McLuhan said is that, no, 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 no. The content almost doesn't matter. The medium is itself the message. The internet is the message. And YouTube and Netflix do things in a, particular, in a very different way um, to deal with video. YouTube, born in 2005. Netflix started a bit earlier. Uh, as a rental video service, a place that rented um, DVDs. Uh, but these are the tools we use. And McLuhan also said that we shape our tools and then our tools shape us. Right? So uh, it's not only about content. It's all about the tool. It's all about the medium or media that the media we choose shapes us too. Uh, just to give you an example, and, and that comes um, Nicholas Carr, in case you want some interesting reading, I don't know if you've read how the inter what the internet is doing to our brain. Nicholas Carr. Jim Scrivener talked about that a few years ago uh, in Brazil when he was at the Brastis, so in 2012, uh, and also at the ITFO that year. Um, 
he talked about the hyperlink era and how the internet, uh, in a way, shapes our brains. How it controls uh, the way we think. And it's quite an interesting read, and it's a long story. And to make a long story short, um, I just want to show you a few numbers about YouTube and Netflix so you can have an idea of uh, the kind of phenomena we're talking about. So some statistics, some facts about YouTube. 1.3 billion users worldwide. Uh, 300 hours of videos are uploaded to YouTube every minute. Wow. 300 hours every minute. 5 billion videos watched every single day. 5 billion videos, almost one for each person on Earth. Uh, YouTube gets 30 million visitors per day. Uh, on aver in average, 8 out of 10 uh, people watch videos on YouTube. That's 80% of those who are from 18 to 49 years old. Uh, what else is interesting to say here? Uh, more than 10,000 videos on YouTube have reached over a billion views. That's a lot. More than 10,000. Um, and these are some of the most recent statistics. In terms of traffic, uh, of access to YouTube, the United States is the first country in the world with almost 170 million people. And guess what's the second market for YouTube? Brazil, with 70 million subscribers, 70 million users, 70 million people who access YouTube. Second largest market, far ahead from Russia, from Japan, and from many other countries. So Brazil is very important for that. They're paying attention to us. YouTube, right? That's YouTube. Now, uh, if you think about Netflix, uh, this is from last, last month's uh, Guardian. Say, uh, when YouTube broke the 100 million subscribers barrier. So more than 100 million people uh, watching it. Do you recognize this image? Do you know the name of the show? No. Serious? Does anyone know? Stranger Things, right? The girl from Stranger Things. That's a courtesy of Netflix. And guess what? In terms of uh, bigger markets, number one, United States. Guess what's the second biggest market for Netflix in the world? Brazil. Brazil has 7.1% of all subscribers to Netflix. Second only to the United States, which is where Netflix started. By the way, <coughs> this was the first time uh, more than 50% of subscribers were registered outside the United States. On that day that Netflix uh, published this result, share price of Netflix reached $180 uh, dollars per share and uh, made Netflix, even though it's a virtual company with no, uh, yeah, I mean, with a much more modern business, uh, almost three times more valuable than Fox, for example, that has everything you can possibly imagine in terms of infrastructure and everything. Uh, this is also from The Guardian from 2015, when in the UK, viewers doubled the amount of time they spent watching Netflix movies. They doubled. And the reason I'm using this, it's not because 2015, it's not, it's not very recent, but because they, this figure has doubled every year. It doubles year after year. It doubled again in 2016. It might double again this year, right? Um, that, so that's because it, the tools are shaping us, the, the way we, we see things. And there are lots of interesting research um, 
Do you know the word binge? Binge? Do, do you binge your favorite series? No, I don't know. Usually binge? Binge? That's tool that Fernanda does, right? That's when you watch your favorite show and you watch another episode and another episode and another episode. Do you do that? Do you watch four or five episodes in a row? Mm, yes. Do you like binging? Oh, yes. Right, binge watching? And that's what happens. That's why people have, increase, have been increasing their numbers because they watch more and more again. Again, because the tool allows us to do that. Right? In terms of tools shaping us again, I've just remembered the example of YouTube. This is not my computer. But if I, if I open YouTube on my computer, what happens now? Remember when, when Google uh, completes the words you type just to offer you a faster hit for the search engine? Um, now, I, op I open YouTube on my computer and there it says, LOL surprise dolls. I say, what the heck? What's going on with that? And that's my daughter. She keeps watching LOL dolls, surprise dolls videos. And now every time I watch it, it offers me effortlessly. I can simply click and see it. If I don't do anything, it'll probably pay an, play an LOL video by itself. But the idea is that I won't think. I'll do things automatically. I'll binge watch automatically. Tools are made to shape us. So it's not only content, it's also the medium that matters. Get that? Yeah. That's, the, that's the idea uh, behind that. Uh, uh, in 2020, Netflix and Amazon, video, only the video services from Amazon, right? will overtake the whole cinema box office in the UK, will uh, collect more money than all films and rooms combined in the UK and probably in other places too. And uh, this is more recent, this is for sep from September, saying that Disney plans their own streaming service and they will pull out all their titles from Netflix and Amazon. So this is gonna be a big fight. And Disney wants to fight it as well, right? So that's where the future is going to. So it, it was probably a right decision when Netflix refused. Um, when Netflix was a startup and, and Blockbuster, the rental video store tried to buy it, tried to acquire it. Um, it was probably the right move to reject the offer. Um, in the first quarter of this year was the first time Netflix subscribers topped uh, cable TV subscribers in the United States. Hello? Uh, so there are more Netflix subscribers than cable TV subscribers. And this is uh, something that happened this year with uh, nominations and wins at the Emmys, the Emmy Award from um, North American Television. Um, Netflix started in 2013 with 13 nominations and they won three prizes. Look what happened this year. 91 nominations with 20 uh, awards. And this will probably, this is happening at the Golden Globe, it will start happening at the Academy Awards, the Oscars, and so on and so forth. So this is what will uh, take over industries. But we're here to talk about using videos in classroom. What are the implications of these facts to our students? Any guesses? Students like him? Okay. Ah, now it's very easy to watch a movie outside the classroom, right? No. Oops. Outside the movie theater. Yeah, there was a time in which if our students needed to, to watch a movie in English, they would have to get at our English school, right? Because it, was, it would be the only one that had the, the cassette in English or with English sub, uh, subtitles, whatever. But now it's different, right? So, 
this is a much more visual generation. Who are, they watch a lot of movies. They can see whatever they want at any time. They don't have to wait anymore. This is another thing. Uh, sorry about that. That. Uh, and besides that, you have to come back some, uh, I don't know what happened here. There's a, ah, there's something else missing. There's a slide missing. Sorry. Oh, many. You're right. When you hold like this. Ah, then it skips a million slides, maybe. All right. Thank you. So they don't wait anymore. And this is what Mr. Harmer says. They watch too much video. So they associate that with relaxation. And we need to make sure to provide them with good viewing and listening tasks so that they give their full attention to what they're hearing and seeing. Otherwise, they won't. Because they have good quality just in their cell phones. They may, uh, teacher, please let me go to the bathroom. I need to watch a real video there, right? So, no, not like that. But we need to offer them good quality uh, content in classroom as well, right? And uh, I know this, this might be difficult uh, for, for some of us, but I still remember when I started teaching uh, private lessons and I worked for a company and the owner gave me a CD. Here, take it. Songs for classroom, the CD said. And the songs were Hotel California and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yeah, the top of... The rain, you know, that might not be the best way to go nowadays, nowadays right? Um, this, this is a different uh, generation. So, reasons for using authentic videos. I'd like to start by quoting Penny Err. Have you ever seen Penny before? This is Err. She has retired and then gone back, and, and sometimes she gives some, some workshops and talks. And she's, she was the first person to say that, I guess, in the beginning of the 1990s. She's, she talked about the visibility of the speaker in, in a book called uh, Teaching, Listening, Comprehension. She says, it's, I think it's fair to say that we are nearly always in the physical presence of or able to see the person we're listening to. So what she's saying about the visibility of the speaker, and, and she, go, she goes on to say, to, to talk about environmental clues, which is another reason for using authentic videos. Apart from the speaker himself, his facial expression, posture, eye direction, proximity, gesture, tone of voice, a real life listening situation is normally rich in environmental clues as to the content and implication of what is said. And the kind of listening that we used to do in the classroom, I don't, I'm not sure we still do it, um, sound recordings, broadcasts, and telephone conversations are relatively poor in such clues. But these normally comprise only a small part of our total listening activity. <coughs> so this is not what we do mostly where we listen to most things in real life, right? Sound recordings, bro broadcast, telephone conversations. Okay, we do that in real life, but only a small part of our total listening activity. Um, so environmental clues are very important. Visibility of the speaker is very important. And we have all that when we watch authentic videos. But besides that, do you agree? If you agree, you can raise your hand as well. They're fun, motivating, relaxing. Prevent students from feeling bored, right? Oh, this class again, grammar again. Okay, here we go, right? Um, they also bring the real world to classroom. They show language and news. They show context and other cultural clues as well. What do people wear? What do they eat for breakfast? What do they eat for lunch? Uh, How is transportation in that country? All that can be taught and seen all together when you use authentic videos. And if that's not enough, 
students love them, don't they? Don't they really like authentic videos? So this is a good reason for using them. Now, I'd like to quickly guide you through six things to consider when selecting 